We ended our last video with the creation of our studio geometry. In this tutorial we will look at what a voxel is and how we can use MASH to create voxels from geometry. We will also look at setting up a HDR lighting environment in Arnold. What is a voxelized shape? A voxel is a volumized 3D grid which is defined by a shape into which an array of discrete elements can be placed to give a notional impression of this initial shape. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I've set up this very simple scene with a sphere. To show you the voxelized version of the sphere which I'm going to create using cubes, I've set up a very simple mesh network. But if I just hide the sphere, Control H to hide and then bring up the repro mesh which has been voxelized using Shift H to unhide. You can see that this is the sphere but represented by cubes. If I go into my mesh one distribute node and inc increase or decrease my voxel size, which essentially is the size of the 3D volume voxelized grid, you can see that the smaller I make my voxel size, the more elements. Oh, that's a bit too much bit too few. The more elements are created to make the sphere and therefore give a more correct impression of the actual final shape. Effectively three-dimensional pixels. So I hope this has helped explain what a voxel is and now let's get on and voxelize our dancer. To change the dancer to one made out of voxels we can use MASH to easily create a voxelized shape. So first of all, I'm just going to zoom in to our dancer. In the polygon menu, create a new cube, which will be the base of our voxelized network. What I'm going to do is just for the moment, hide our studio using control H. There we go. And then we can now see our cube. Just going to rename this cube P cube one for voxels in the outliner so that I can keep track of it. And I'm going to use the channel box, I'm going to shift select my scale and then use the middle mouse button to take it down to a scale of about 0.5. In fact, I might get a bit more specific and just use tab to do 0 0.461 across each one. 0 0.461, 0 0.461, okay. Now we're going to move to the mesh shelf and and making sure I've got P cube one for voxels selected. Go up to create mesh network and we have ourselves a new mesh network with our 10 cubes. Just going to open our mesh editor and I'm going to rename this mesh one to mesh one voxels. It is good practice to get into the habit of renaming your mash networks as you go, as you can often end up with five or six or even more mash networks. And just even with the mash editor, trying to keep track of which mash network is doing what can be quite tricky unless you've renamed them. So let's select our distribute node and change the distribution type to mesh. Scroll down to our mesh options and just going to close this dance one reference in the outliner and I'm going to middle mouse button our dance dance one skin object which if we remember is the skin of our element so to distribute node again and just middle mouse button this to our input mesh okay and that's done I'm just going to hide using control H our dance dance one skin object and if we zoom in we can see some cubes placed at various vertices on our mesh which is set to the method of scatter so we're going to change this method to voxel and here we have the beginnings of a voxelized mesh now this would be nigh on impossible to do in cinema 4d without the use of a third-party plugin Okay, so now that we can see that, let's just change our voxel settings. So let's change our voxel size to 0 0.631. Ah, it's much better. We're going to go back 
and select our P cube one for voxels. Press Shift H to unhide it, and remember it was Control H to hide it. Just zoom in a bit. I'm just going to using the R key for scale. This is another way to control our cube size on our voxel. So yeah, that's quite good. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Just gives a bit more granular control than is possible with just entering into the voxel size settings here. I just prefer this method as it just allows me to finesse it ever so slightly. So let's just have a look at that. Pull that. And again, we are running this with screen capture software on a one-year-old MacBook Pro and we're still getting very acceptable playback. I'm just going to stop that there. And there's a good point for him to stop. Our voxel cubes are looking a bit too sharp and not very interesting, so I want to add a bit of detail. So I'm going to zoom in with the F key. And I'm just going to right click, switch into edge mode. I'm going to go into lasso split and select all. Yep, that's great. I'm going to go into the modeling toolkit and select bevel, make our fraction 0 0.05, that's great. And I'm just going to change the segments to 2. This gives a small bevel on the cube, which if we zoom out, we can see that has been updated in our mash repro mesh. And this will allow Arnold to pick up these surface details in the render to just add bits of glinting and a little bit more life and realism into our final render. And now, if we go back to panels perspective camera one to see our camera view, we can see we have a voxelized dancer. Let's just show our studio again by selecting it and pressing shift. H. That's great. As our basic scene is now set, we should start a basic lighting setup of our scene. This lighting will be handled by an HDR with an Arnold. To make sure that we are rendering with Arnold, switch to the rendering menu and under render, let's just make sure we've got render using Arnold renderer. Let's go to our render settings. And under the Arnold Renderer tab, let's just switch our camera AA to 2, which is fine for preview purposes. The great thing about Arnold is that for a lot of circumstances, just increasing the camera AA value can create production-ready renders. To use the interactive preview capabilities of Arnold, in the Arnold menu, select Arnold Render View. This pops up the new Vermeer 2017 Arnold Render View window. As we're working with Arnold, and especially since I am using screen recording software, I can set my UI threads for screen recording to be three. To interactively reset the window, go to View, Menu Test Resolution, Fit Window Size. Oop. Test Resolution, Fit Window Size. And that way we will be within the boundaries going to make sure our small play icon is pressed and that we are using our camera shape one view. As you can see, at the moment, the Arnold render view is pitch black. To be able to see anything with Arnold, we need to add materials to the geometry, which we want to render, as well as add a light, which can either be a Maya light or one of the specific Arnold light types. For our needs, we need an Arnold sky dome. So in the Arnold menu, go to lights and sky dome light. Make sure we select our AI Sky Dome Light and in our AI Sky Dome Light Shape 1 tab, let's press on the color. Just going to pause Arnold Render View for a second. 
So we're going to use the Arnold Texture AI Image node, even though we could use the 2D File node as we have in previous tutorials. And I'm going to, in the image name, select MG HDR HDR. And we can see we've got a bit more light elements in here. We now need to apply Arnold materials to our geometry. So select the studio geometry. I'm just going to pause the Arnold render view. And in the viewport, right click and select assign new material. Select a Arnold shader and AI standard. It does look like the studio is now rendering slightly quicker. So let's just change this name to AI Standard 1 Studio. Let's select our voxel, Mash 1 Voxels Repro Mesh, and right click and again assign new material shader. AI standard, and we'll call this AI standard to voxel. Now, when we scrub through, unfortunately, the Arnold render view doesn't show the updated voxel mesh. This can be fixed easily by in the Arnold render view render Ooh. menu, we just go to update full scene. And this can also be accessed by command U on the Mac and control U on the PC. And here we can see our updated voxel dancer. We are noticing a little bit of slowdown in the Arnold preview. Normally it's a lot quicker than this, but this is because we are using the screen recording software. To adjust the brightness in the image, let's select our dome light and just increase its intensity a little. Maybe not too much. Let's say 1.5. I do want a bit of separation between the dancer and the studio, so I can select. I can either just click on the render view to select an element, which is handy, or just more straightforwardly, just go into the studio. I'm just going to pause this. In fact, let's just use our node editor again. Select a new tab. Bring in all elements using the input and output connections button. If I'll just hide the render view for now. And there's our AI standard. So what, just pop up, uh, okay. Just set that going again. I'm just gonna drop the diffuse weight from 0.7 to 0.45. I'm just going to make a crop region here as well so we can just concentrate using Arnold render view, render, crop region. Again, we can notice a bit of graininess in the image. So to improve that, we could just go back into our render settings. And for example, set our camera AA up to four. And then we could set it even higher again for final render settings such as nine or 10. Yes, we can start to see we're getting that lovely Arnold look with that really nice grain and lovely fall off and roll off happening across the shapes.